I'm joined today by visiting scholar Dr. Gavin Ortland. Gavin, um, there is a powerful argument for God called the moral argument, but I know you have kind of an insight about the challenge of hypocrisy and mm. the moral argument. Maybe we could begin by having you give us a summary of what the moral argument is all about. Okay, sure. Well, there are different versions of the moral argument. Um, one of the most common is to say that basically God is the best explanation mm. for the objectivity of moral values and duties. By objectivity, we mean um, they're not based upon human opinion, okay. but they are fixed and binding. Irrespective of what anyone says or believes, it's wrong to uh, torture someone for fun. That's yeah. objectively wrong, even if you live in a society that allows it. Um, so there are different ways it can be put. Uh, it can be put as a deductive argument. Um, we've been talking about using abductive arguments yeah. where you start with a present set of conditions and then infer backwards to the best explanation. Yeah. And that's how I like to put it. I like to just say we have moral instincts. They're extremely powerful. What's the best explanation for that? So God can ground morality so that there is this universal or objective nature to it. How then do you see the challenge of hypocrisy relating to the moral argument? Well, this is probably the most common response that I hear. Mm -hmm. um, it, you know, you start talking about morality and people want to say, but look at all the bad things that religious people do. Yeah. And um, I think it's helpful to talk about that because um, I see that as kind of a red herring, actually. It's a really a diversionary important... tactic, right? Yes, exactly. A distraction. Yeah. Um, it, you know, it's an important thing to address, for sure, because a lot of people are upset about religious hypocrisy they see, and yeah. we need to talk about that. But it's not really a refutation of the moral argument, as it's usually given, I don't think. Okay. Because the moral argument is not about, you know, whether religious people are sincere or good compared to irreligious people or something like that. That's kind of a sociological question or a historical question. It's also not about whether you need to be religious to know morality. That's an epistemological question about okay. how we know things. Right. It's also not a historical question of whether religions preceded moral values in human history. Those are all interesting things. But the moral argument is about the ontological status of morality itself. It, why are certain things objectively good or bad? And we, you know, if people are hypocrites, that doesn't really touch that argument. Yeah. So having said that, we do need to address people's concerns. And it is a certainly just practically and emotionally, it's a tough issue that we need to be prepared to respond to. Gavin, it seems that when people bring up the problem of evil or they bring up specifically Christian hypocrisy, mm. um, you'd be better off, I think, in critiquing if you could ground objective morality. So in one sense, the, the moral argument would help you critique these so-called you know, challenges to Christianity. What's your thoughts about that? Yeah, yeah I've felt for a long time that... Um, a religious foundation is the best way to critique religion. Yeah. Um, because, and if, as a Christian, I see that that so much of what is in our scripture is a, a, a criticism or is in conflict with um, religious hypocrisy. You know, yeah. um, Amos 5.21, God says, I hate your religious feasts. They're a stench to me. Wow. Um, and then you think, of course, of Jesus. And, and the opponents of Jesus are not secular forces. Um, it's the most serious and ardent religious people of the day. Yeah. And they're the ones who are most seriously in conflict with him. And that he in, himself becomes indignant at and provoked at. So I want to put my armor on the shoulder of my skeptical friend who's bothered by religious hypocrisy in the church or elsewhere yeah. and say, you know, Jesus himself was grieved and provoked and angered by the Pharisees for their yeah. hypocrisy. And it may be the case that this is not a reason actually to reject Christianity as such, but it is a reason to oppose the hypocrisy. You know, Gavin, I often think that the old atheists, in contrast to the new atheists, the old atheists were often, I think, more formidable. Nietzsche, Camus, mm -hmm. 
largely because they understood Christianity and were they knew the the weaknesses or the areas of 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 tension. And so, I think it's really healthy for Christians and non Christians to realize that Christians are grieved by hypocrisy. Mm -hmm. Yeah, yeah. Just at a practical level, I think having a heart of sympathy uh, to someone's concerns. And, uh, you know, I find it helpful to really listen and draw out those concerns yeah. and ask them questions. How did that affect you? And uh, not so that we don't run the risk of being dismissive of the concern. But we want to validate that concern. Yeah. Religious hypocrisy is a real problem. And then I like to say, well, let's flip it and say, suppose that because of this, we rejected belief in God. What grounds would we have to object to this? And I think that um, you really end up in a, in a difficult position if you're a naturalist to make strong moral judgments. Um, they can be made, I suppose, as a matter of preference and taste, but to claim that something is objectively wrong uh, if there's nothing beyond nature, I think we do need to gently probe our skeptical friends and say, uh, what is the basis for that moral judgment. We don't judge uh, sharks for eating seals. Right. Now, the, the, we don't say that they're going to be judged on Judgment Day for what they have done. You know? It's their nature, yeah. And if you're a naturalist, the strong devour the weak. That's the way the whole show goes. And so um, the very uh, instincts that we have to be so bothered by religious hypocrisy, to me, are an indication that there's something more than just the, the strong devour the weak, and that's the paradigm for all of reality.